Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Today, I am going to show you how to model an ice cream with the cone. We will start with the cone itself. So first create a plane. Make sure to keep its length and width equal. Also, the segments for length and width should be 1. Here are the values that I will be going with. It is better to position the plane at the center. Now go to the modify panel and in the modifier list, add a shell modifier. Leave the parameter of the shell modifier unchanged. Then add a turbo smooth modifier. And set the iterations to 2. Now, add an edit poly modifier. Choose the polygon selection type. And select these polygons as I am doing here. Once they are selected, hold shift and using the transform tool, Drag the selected polygons upwards. This will make a clone of the selected polygons. Choose clone to object here and click OK. Now hit delete to delete the original mesh. Now you have to connect these vertices with these outer vertices. This can be done by using the target weld option in the edit vertices rollout. Replicate the action that I am doing here. Once this is done, you may barely notice that some of the vertices at the center are higher than the vertices located at the corners. To fix this, select all the vertices and use the Make Planar Along the Z-Axis option. This will ensure that all vertices will have the same value for Z-Axis. So now we have a circular shape. We can get this shape very easily by using the regularize script. However, since I didn't want to use any script, so this is the only way in my knowledge to get a shape like this. It is very important here to adjust its pivot point. To do that, go to Hierarchy Panel. Select Effect Pivot Only button followed by the Center to Object button. Now, we need to further change this shape a bit. First select the bottom 5 vertices and move them down a little. Then with the vertices selected, select the Make Planner option along the Y axis this time. Now select the vertices above the bottom ones, and move them down a little too. Now, choose the edge selection type, and select the outer edges. Use the scale tool, and while holding shift, increase the scale to create new outer edges. Unselect the edge selection type, and then add a shell modifier again. This will be the thickness of the ice cream cone, so set it according to your requirement. I would suggest you keep the value low, as ice cream cones are pretty thin. Now add another edit poly modifier on top of the shell modifier. Using the polygon selection type, select the newly created outer polygons like so. Now using the extrude tool, Extrude the polygons by a tiny amount. Now you have to select these three edges along the entire mesh. Make sure to carefully select all of them. Now use the chamfer option and chamfer them by a tiny amount as well. This will maintain the definition of the shape when we apply the turbo smooth modifier. Set the iteration to 3. At this point, we should apply the classic cone texture. Open the material editor and create a standard material. Give it any color that you want. I have increased the self-illumination so you can see the texture a bit better. Now assign this material to the object by right-clicking on the material and choosing the Assign Material to Selection option. Now what you have to do is to clone this material. Simply hold Shift and drag the first material with the mouse to create a copy of it. 
The first material will be applied to the outer rim of the cone, and the second material will be applied to the rest of the cone. Since we have already applied the first material to the entire shape, we need to select the polygons which will only have the second material. To do that, apply an edit poly modifier on top of the turbo smooth modifier, then switch the view to top. We have to select all the polygons apart from the polygons that make the rim of the cone. This might look difficult, but it is very easy. Simply zoom in, like I'm doing here. Select one of the polygon, and while holding control, and shift. Select the polygon right next to it. This will select the ring of the polygons. Repeat this for the above polygons as well. Now at this point, this method will not work. As you can see, due to the nature of the shape, it will start selecting the wrong polygons. So what you can do here is to change the selection region to lasso. Make sure to turn on the ignore back facing option. Now, hold down the left mouse button and carefully draw a selection region within the polygons that you have selected earlier. As you can see, it was not as difficult as it looked. Once you're done, inspect the shape to make sure that any unnecessary polygon has not been selected. Now add an edit mesh modifier because with the edit poly modifier, you can't apply a separate material to only the selected polygons. Open the material editor and assign the second material to the selected polygons. Now we need to create the cone texture with the second material selected. Expand the maps rollout and select the none button next to bump. I'm going to use a bitmap that I have created. It is very easy to make and you can basically make it in Microsoft Paint if you want to. Just make sure that its height and width are equal. With the bump map applied, if we render the scene now, you will not see any cone texture. Clearly we have to make some changes. First increase the bump amount to a ridiculously high value. Then open the bitmap settings. Increase the X and Y tiling, also rotated along the W axis by an angle of 25. Moreover, unselect the polygon selection type and apply a UVW map modifier. Now make sure that the planner mapping is selected. Expand the modifier and select Gizmo. Now using the scale tool, scale it down. We are basically increasing the tiling of our map. You can do it from the bitmap settings as we have done earlier, or you can do it like this. If we render the scene now, you will see the familiar cone texture. Increase or decrease the scale of the gizmo to make sure it looks roughly like mine. Once the material is done, we will now make this into the shape of a cone. To do that, add a bend modifier. Switch the bend axis to X, then increase the angle until it looks something like this. As you can see that both ends are intersecting each other. To fix this, add FFD 4x4x4 modifier below the bend modifier. Now choose the control points option by expanding the modifier, and select the control points at one end like I am doing here. Move them up or down, to create a shape like this. Now for the cone shape, we will select all the control points and rotate them until we get a shape that we are happy with. There are many adjustments that you can do here by moving or rotating each of the control points to get the desired shape.
We are done with the cone. Now let's make the ice cream on top of it. For that, go to Extended Primitives and create a Jangon. Here are the parameters that I will be using. Now position at the top of the cone like I am doing here. It doesn't matter if the shape is clipping through the cone, apply an edit poly modifier and select the vertices at the top of the jangon. Move them downwards to just at the tip of the cone. Now select the vertex at the bottom of the jangon. Make sure to turn on the edge constraint and move each vertex inwards. Once this is done, turn off the edge constraint. Select the vertices at the top again and rotate them like I am doing here. You should end up with a shape like this. Now with the polygon selection type, select each of the vertex at the top and extrude them based on the height that you want for the ice cream. Now make a few minor adjustments to its position. Then select the edges in the middle of the mesh. Using the connect tool, make five or six ring of edges along the mesh. Now apply the twist modifier. Increase the angle by a large amount. Also, increase the bias as well, so that the polygons at the bottom remains relatively untwisted. After this, add the taper modifier. Increase the amount until it looks like a cone. Also increase the curves to make it look more rounder. Lastly, add a turbo smooth modifier. As you can see, we have created a very good shape of the ice cream. From here on, you can perform minor adjustments to make it look more authentic. You can go back to the previously applied modifiers and change their parameters. Or you can add new modifiers, such as the FFD 4x4x4, and make adjustments by using control points. You can also add sprinkles on top of the ice cream, using the method that I have used in my tutorial about making a 3D donut. That is pretty much it for this tutorial. If you have found it helpful, please like, subscribe and share this. Also, let me know in the comments about any other tutorials that you want to see. Thank you for watching.